I take photographs because I, I like the act of photography. Photography is kind of the core of my existence at this point. I mean, it's the, it's my identity for better or for worse. And in a strange way has been since the moment I discovered it. It remains kind of one of the very few kind of mystical experiences I think I've ever had is this understanding and finding the camera and what I could, what it could do and what I could do with it that made me kind of complete. You know, first, it's the feeling I had looking at pictures, looking at great pictures. They made me feel something that I was unfamiliar with. It was a kind of, you know, it's an attraction to the beauty of the form, the virtuosity in some ways of the, the structure of condensing a complicated scene down into something that had a beautiful harmony to it. Sometimes it was the emotions of the frame, the emotions that these people were experiencing. Sometimes it was the intersection of color, how I'd never seen color relate to other colors or to people or to objects that way. Sometimes it was finding the beauty in the most boring things. Uh, you know, a crack in a wall or a uh, empty parking lot, if seen right, could be something not just beautiful, but transcendent. And that's one of the most profound lessons I've ever learned. So in this class today, we're going to be taking a walk in order to be looking more closely at the world. And what I mean by that is that on a day-to-day -day basis, we pass by so many things and we hardly give them a glance. But when you look more closely as a photographer with a photographer's eyes, suddenly these commonplace things in the right light, at the right moment in the day, perhaps at the right distance or angle from them, suddenly aren't just a branch or a, or a patch of sidewalk or a patch of wall that we pass by every day, but something of subtlety and, and beauty and sometimes transcendence. And we're not guaranteed anything. We're not guaranteed anything because photography is a bit of a mystery. Why and when a good picture comes, that side's outside of our control. But what we can control is the process of looking closely. And even if we don't get anything, we're at least training our eyes to get something the next time. I discovered photography, I think, in a few ways. The first was kind of the subconscious way of discovering photography. It was when I was a kid looking at a lot of photographs, being very drawn to photographs. Um, I spent a lot of time at the local library and at the time I was extremely interested in World War II. And, and so I would go to the library and I'd take out all these old time life photo books that were you know, compendiums of hundreds of photographers looking at, um, looking at that war. And as like a 10, 11 year old, that was a very influential thing. It also kind of introduced me to the complexity of of the experience of war, which was of course so foreign to my life in the suburbs. And despite, and the, the thing I've never figured out is despite the kind of brutality of that imagery, it also had a lot of layers of emotion to it. And I was drawn to those things, you know. Um, and it seems absurd, it still seems absurd, you know. Why, why be so drawn to something so dark, you know. But that's also a mystery of my existence that, that I, I can't answer, you know, never have been able to. The draw to conflict seems like a universal foundation of humanity in many ways. But in terms of, in terms of starting, I didn't really have much of a guide. I, I, I was in a introductory photo class in college that was much more oriented towards, I guess what they would call fine art photography. I was much more drawn to photojournalism. So I think the first part of the process was, was really about trying to kind of 
understand the secrets of the photographs that I loved. Um, and then mimicking what I thought were the lessons I was learning from those photographs. But very quickly, that's not very interesting, right? Because what makes those photographers great is that, that they have their own identity. They have, they have something to say. And that thing that they're saying with their work uh, is crafted from personal experience, it's crafted from passion, and, and the style that they take those pictures in is a reflection of those things. So I tried to understand what it was that I wanted to pursue. Um, and unfortunately, and in a weird way, tragically, like my sense of identity was, was born out of, of, of the violence and horror of September 11th and its aftermath. Um, when we invaded the Iraq and Afghanistan and suddenly kind of my interest in conflict and interest in photography and kind of the dark and somewhat superficial instincts of a young man all kind of coalesced together in this recognition that I, you know, wanted to go and cover those conflicts. But looking back on the period, on this period where I made a decision to go to these conflicts. First of all, I didn't really make a decision to go. You know, that was the first lesson I learned, that the forces that made me realize I was a photographer weren't really choices, I just, I just was a photographer. That was who I was. It was only in retrospect that I found reasons for it, I found a narrative for it, you know, a story to tell about it, and all those stories are, are true. But they don't, substitute for the the impulse you know the instinct and 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 that's what this period revealed to me you know the instinct of that i was only partially in control in a way of myself and my own mind and my own desires and my own choices the subconscious was operating on just as strong if not a stronger level than than my conscious mind mm -hmm.